Welcome back to the series where we go over 4th edition so that you can make an educated guess without looking like a dumbass. This week we're going to be covering the Monster Manual. Now, I have problems with this Monster Manual. Initially, it was very good. It, it balanced fairly well with the player's handbook. And, I mean, it covers, you know, Heroic Tier, which is level 1 to level 10, Paragon Tier, which is level 11 to 20, and then Epic, which is 30, 21 to 30. Now, given, obviously, Epic Tier was not the main focus of this Monster Manual. This Monster Manual primarily focused on Heroic Tier with a little bit of Paragon and a tiny bit of Epic. They released two more Monster Manuals after this to cover more. But... My problem with this monster manual stems from these monsters became very outdated. Some of these monsters became very outdated very fast in comparison to later releases, making the monster manual on some levels really just not worth using anymore. Now, I've run fights over and over again where I've used things like the green dragon. I have one fight is significantly different than the other because the dragons in the essentials line were given so much more power they had reactions they had more things they could do on their turn to make them more intimidating whereas the monsters in the player's handbook were more tailored to the player's handbook one initial classes which they didn't have a lot of reactions and you know just crazy I'm out of my turn I'm still gonna swing and hit you which led to a lot of uh, you know the monsters getting the shit kicked out of them early on because originally in my 4e game I didn't have the monster vault so I was playing with essentials you know heroes I think it was knight class I was playing with a knight in the group and I was using this monster manual and there just wasn't enough you know ability for these monsters to really put up a threat I mean yes to the wizard they could but to a knight who they've made so good at controlling the battlefield I mean you might as well just there, there really wasn't much point for some of these monsters now that's not to say all of these monsters are worthless um, well, Crocodile, still a very solid monster. Very good at what it does. Um, these uh, Cambians, which are uh, half demon, I believe it is? Devil. Half devil, half human. So they're, they're still pretty cool. Um, they're more supposed to be... They're not supposed to be straight out of this. I mean, think of them like humans... You don't just use human thugs. I mean, you want to give them a little bit more flavor. Um, the Beholder got better. Significantly better with the Essentials alterations. And ultimately, there is a lot of monsters in this book. There is... Let's see how many pages there are of monsters. There is... 275 pages of monsters so I mean that's a lot and then it goes into the back area which I really like this where uh, racial traits so it lists some, how some of these are playable unlike in uh, earlier editions where you had these level adjustments all over the place you don't have that here here it's just just take this and play now given they're not as balanced as they um as the player handbook ones are and some of these actually did become legitimate um uh player races in player's handbooks which we'll cover later i mean it, it's it's got a lot of good monsters in it that can pose a threat even to essentials characters and do the fact that um, I mean, 
Wizards hasn't gone all the way to update their epic tier yet. I mean, you've just got these monster manuals, which they're not bad. But the monsters that got updated got significantly better. Far more capable of doing things. However, that's not to say that those central vault monster vaults didn't leave things out. Things they left out, um, notably off the top of my head, was the um, was the lichen in as in depth as I have it here. Like it just wasn't. Oh wait, yeah. It, they just changed it. It wasn't as good. Four E changed lycanthropes so that they no longer transfer through disease initially. I mean, obviously a DM could just kind of figure out how to take it. It won't be that hard and alter it to make it a template. But um, four E initially does not have rules for being a lichen, which kind of annoys me because I. I mean, we got rules for being a vampire. Why can't we have rules for being a werewolf or a werebat or a were shark or some other ungodly creation? Um, however, some monsters in this thing definitely needed a update. The Lich, for example, sucks in this book. I mean, there are a couple monsters that just are straight crappy. But, I mean, overall, as a book... The Monster Manual, it's really, if you got it, great. If you don't, I wouldn't sweat it because, you know, just spend the Monster Falls because you also get the tokens, which are awesome. I mean, it's a good book if you need Epic Tier and, you know, you got nothing else. If you can pick it up for semi-cheap, go for it. But... Unless you want to spend time working or just be disappointed with your monsters, this monster manual is out of date. Now, it, that's not to say that if you're just playing with Player's Handbooks, you know, Player's Handbook 1, I believe Player's Handbook 2, and Player's Handbook 3. If you're just playing with those things, this is fine. It really didn't get bad until the Essentials, which isn't to say Essentials is bad, it's just these monsters were calibrated to non-Essentials powers. So, overall, pretty good. I got mine actually when it first came out. Expensive as book. But, hey, eh, the price you pay to stay up to date. So, that's my review for the Monster Manual. It's really brief, but honestly, I'm not going to go over every monster in this book. And there's not much you can say about a Monster Manual past whether the monsters are worth a damn or not. So, until next time, I th we'll be reviewing we'll be reviewing the Dungeon Master Guide next week. So, we'll see how that goes, and then we'll move on from there. Until next time, have a good one.